Gregor and I, we've both been able to move past whatever it was, and we've both both probably changed and adapted to whatever happened and got over it. Duan obviously scores this try, and I thought it was Farrell at the time, so I run up to get him, and I was kind of like, what are you saying now, sort of thing. Like, you can't be a dick and be an arsehole like I am. You've got to be... You don't <laughs> kill that face. Sorry, I'm, always, gonna, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. I'm always friendly and smiley. I can't quite understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a setup question. Head coach is, is announced in January. Who, who would you like, Finn, to be the Lions head coach? Whose top pocket are you putting your business card in? Hello, Dream Team. Welcome along to this week's episode of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby with our very good friends at Continental Tires. Christmas is in the air. One or two of us have gone early. No jumpers? You're, you're, you're much more chipper because um, I know this is a time-sensitive podcast, but he's very upset recently. Yeah, it was a down day yesterday. Had a bad day. Very down day. Yeah, you know that day where life picks up on you and it picks up like, that you're not feeling great. Yeah. You, got, you was walking to the show and got splashed by a bus and you got even more sulky. I don't really like the Your north shit, very much. got full, full of water, didn't they? Yeah. Gym well, my gym shoes your gym got shoes, wet. Your green flash plimps got screwed. Yeah. yeah. But I'm feeling okay? very good now. But you feel better. Yeah. Christmas you is in the chipper. Air. Is it because yeah. you're in, back in Bath, your favourite? My like, favourite place. Your favourite place. My heroes. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Oh, thanks, mate. That's uh, short memory. Let's say a very warm welcome. We're actually just, we should reference, we're at the very nice Bath Spa Hotel, which, was that part of your package, Johnny Bath? Have you got a suite here, Finn uh, I think we'll get access to it, so just in the spa earlier. Where are you? Oh, yeah. Captain's run yet, so. We usually come here day before. Day of the game, actually. So. Do you? Well, yeah, for a bit so of crumpets and there's a nice a afternoon bit of tea outside. And French and... toast. I thought he meant a bit of crumpet. I was yeah, like, I think yeah. he's married, but I like what <laughs> I said, but then he meant actual crumpets. Um, no, he's looking very, I thought when he came in, just... Look, the lid's been absolutely tightened to an inch of its life. Um, Is this part of the game day routine? Do you have to look good to play good? Um, I was actually kind of planning for the week after Christmas or for Christmas because I'll go home. Right. So I thought if I get a cut today, I then won't need to cut until the Harlequins game. Yeah. And then that'll see me through for Christmas. So. Yeah. But, but, but it's, in all fairness, when you have spaghetti arms, you need to keep yeah, the camera on yeah. top. Finn the so, Muscle Russell, his yeah, arms are good. Far. You should start like selling like advertising hoarding on the side just to keep away from the arms, just like that, you can flash the arm. Go fucking hell, he is unbelievable. Is that sponsored by uh, Domino's on the corner? <laughs> Wasn't there a picture of you once before a Scotland game coming out of a tanning salon and getting into an Aston Martin that went viral? Or if I could, <laughs> no, no, made, have I made I think that, that up? that was Baines. That was coming out of Baines of Bakery. That is was that, coming that out was of, yeah, it was? Yeah. But what, what a story though. Was, so it was the day before a Scotland game and you'd uh, been for a, a pie? No, I'd have gone back home to my parents in Bridge Valley and probably just felt like a steak bake or something in the morning. Right. <laughs> so so the morning, morning, morning yeah. said Aston Martin out and went the for morning, a steak bake. It's terrifying. I'm on board with. How are you? Thank you for having us in your new city. Um, it's very nice to see you. How is life? Have you settled in? Are you unpacked? Have you got everything as you want it? Yeah, no, it's good so far. Um, we moved, well, shipped everything across at the end of last season, but then we're up in Scotland for most, most of the summer. Yeah. The last few months have been nice. Um, yeah, just kind of getting settled in, getting things unpacked. Um, my partner, she's settled in really well with the girls at the club, which makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, when she's kind of got a lot of stuff going on off, well, not a few, but outside of the house, it's good. So, like I said, to get into the centre of town is maybe 10 minutes, but then 15, 20 minutes to training, so it's quite yeah. easy. How have you, how's the noise factor here in terms of, like, Bath? You, do, do you walk around the people honking horns, shouting, oh, my God, it's Finn Russell! Or is it OK? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been fine so far. Yeah. Um, I don't actually go into town that much. Um, usually when I get home, like I say, my partner's going to gym, like the CrossFit at night, and then dinners every other night. Um, so I usually just get home from training, chill out with a little one. And when we're in town... How old's your little one? Just turned one two Sweet weeks ago. Happy birthday. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was good. We're in Scotland for it, actually, after the sale game, which was nice, so... Tell me about how easy it's been settling in at the club. I mean, it looks like you've hit the ground and taken <laughs> off. Did you, did you get much time between... World Cup and um, starting? No, I came straight back in the week after and then I had, I think after three games, got a week off. So me right. and Emma went to, to New York for five days. Nice. Um, but settling in's been really easy, actually. All good guys, which makes it easier, obviously. Um, I knew Cam, Josh Bayless, Rudy McConaughey from Scotland stuff before. Um, and from when I signed, I, I chat to Johan kind of on a monthly basis. Not much, just a quick catch up, how you getting on sort of thing. And throughout the summer, Lee and Yuan came up to, to Scotland just to catch up around the, the attack and stuff and all the rugby side of it. So um, even through the World Cup, I didn't, they didn't bog me down with anything just after we got knocked out. Yeah. They just sent over a call sheet and said, come back in kind of when you're ready. And I said, I'll be there on Monday or Tuesday, I think it was. So Did you have any preconceptions about coming to the to come into the Premiership and, and sort of what you were going to expect and kind of where you were going to be received? Because I know we've talked a little bit about people, the, the fierce kind of patriotism of the Scottish and the Irish and, and Welsh and stuff, when they come this side, are you, you, do you find it any hostile or, or any different or is, it, or is it all good? No, I found it 
I found it fine, to be fair. Um, I think coming to Bath, with the support you have here, everyone's getting behind the team and wanting the best for the team. So it's been very easy on that side of it. And then I think the way that Johan's trying to, or allowing us to play, it's been good as well. Everyone's buying into that culture. So none of, them, none of the boys anyway have an issue with me. I don't no, think they might tell no, you but different. I wonder, but... is, is it softened you now? Are you like less like, fuck you, English bastards, or a bit more like, actually, <laughs> no, they're not no, as bad that, as they thought? No, they've not told me to change my ways yet. Right. So <laughs> see, see where the next few results go, then I might change my mind. But, but, but it okay, seems fine. good so far. Um, like I said, a good group of boys. Um, you play against a lot of them, but you don't actually get to know them until you're in the same team as them or you're involved with them. So um, it's been good getting to know the guys who I didn't really know that well. But um, I can't really say that I've... I've not enjoyed it, if no, that makes fine, sense. I've not, I've not felt any, I don't know what to say. Animosity. Hate, yeah, animosity, yeah, 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 towards me. I was a bit worried when you came down that the Johan van Graan and the coaching style and South Africa, not to go very stereotypical South African, you know, but last year they played very, very sort of strict box kick, everything else. Obviously, Lee Blackett's now there, who is very opposite to that. How has the balance been? And obviously, you need your freedom, you need your style to play, I think, looking at the games coming have you had free reign to do what you want with the attack or is is it a, is it always a balancing act yeah and no, i think lee he's been really good that he's as you said he's an attacking coach and very much let's have a go and, and play um when i first met you on i kind of asked them like what are you or what's the style that you're looking to play here because if i come just to a kind of box kicking team and you know box kicking scrum set piece team it's not probably going to be the best for me or for he's not going to get the best from me either um, but he said, with the players he's, he's recruited, me being one of them, um, you know, Ollie Lawrence coming, Ted Hill, there's boys that he's got that are looking to play a bit more expansive. Um, and I kind of said, well, when I used to play against Munster and he was the coach, a lot of it would be just their box kicking and trying to like win the aerial battle. And he said, well, with Conor Murray, who was probably the best kicking nine of the game, he's always played to the strengths by doing that. So through his recruitment, he's trying to change or has changed the, the style of rugby that he might have been perceived to coach before. Um, he's very open to ideas and different ways of playing. He's not set that we have to do the box kicking or we have to go wide, wide. He's yeah. quite open to it. Um, balance. Yeah, balance. Yeah, balance. And I think he leaves... What, one thing I you know, really like about Johan is he lets me kind of chat down very comfortably and say, I think we can go wider here or we maybe need to kick that one differently. And he's open to ideas, but also... He lets Lee have his say. He kind of leaves attack to Lee. It's quite refreshing, isn't it? In it. Is it are, you used to, are you used to it? Because I've seen lots of teams where they try to, especially with the England teams I've played in, where they've tried to make English players play like New Zealand. You know, everyone's all put at New Zealand when they were sort of number one team in the world, uh, you know, as the pinnacle of the way to play. But you can't, it didn't suit our style. You, know, you definitely Jones couldn't came, do that with you in the team. There was not a lot of all black about. No, no, there isn't. Um, but, but then when, when when Eddie Jones came in, he obviously went back to the power game. In the teams that you've played in, is that quite refreshing that they're, they're trying to play to the strengths of the people that, 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 that they've recruited? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Like you say, if you recruit a team that's because you want to play a certain way, so there's no point in almost recruiting players that play differently to how you want to play. Um, and I think Yuan's good at getting that balance right of when he picks a team, how we play. Um, you know, Ben Spencer's playing great this year and he's probably one of the best nines kicking the ball now, I think, anyway. But he's had a lot of freedom around the rucks and be able to run with the ball and do his do his own thing. And um, I think that helps me, but also helps the team. It takes seems, pressure off you. Yeah. If you're a nine that's going to take a few steps, then people can't come up as fast mm. on you. Or you, you there's, there's holes behind mm. uh, behind those players. That I think for in. me as well, you know, I might be more of a running 10 and he's probably better than me potentially controlling a game. Yeah. So I can leave that sort of side of it to him knowing and have trust, like full trust in him organising it, hitting the kicks on the money and boys getting it back. And then when it comes to the other side, when we're on the front foot and looking to play, he's going to have full trust and confidence in the way that I'm going to play when I'm calling for it. He's going to trust it and just go through with it. So it's kind of the coach adapting to the players that he's got, but also the players working together and getting that trust with each other, which I think has been good this year. In terms of that, it, what I think what they've got by having you is if you look at your kicks in play, you're, you rank first in all positions of all players. So it's not that you're just a run, the, the running threat. It's because of the it's because of the all-roundness of, of the game that you've guys got. And I, I think you know, having watched Bath, as, you know, it's, it's a team that I played for for nine year, uh, eight years, you know, it was it was a position that was needed that was allowed. You had loads of young, you've got a lot of young players around you, and they just need that connecting. And you know, 189 kicks for 6,306 kicking meters, number one. If you wanted to know that, but also your offloads, you're number one, and then uh, and assists you're off. So you're getting everyone's going to benefit by playing off you. So I think it, it's quite exciting for those young players that are down here. I think those that like the kicking 
a lot of times people just think kicking just for the sake of it, but we've had a few, quite a few attacking kicks. Yeah. We've had the contest well, Sometimes you just have to kick long back and forward and stay in that battle. The offload is something that we're probably still working on to try and get that probably more fluid in the game as to like when actually to throw the offload and who to potentially throw it. Um, this is so what we kind of showed a balance in the game. Yeah, like we this, kick this it, but we also run it, we offload it, we do everything. So it's going to be quite hard to sort of defend that if we, we get it right. Can, can I ask you, I mean, it, it sounds like you're very much almost player coach now. Is that fair? Do you, do you know what I mean? I mean, have you been entrusted? That, that's a very Joey Tribbiani way. Because I write my own lines. But, it, but, <laughs> but, but is that fair? I mean, you, you haven't bought in. You've been brought in to contribute to what Bath are trying to do, not just execute what you're told to do. Uh, yeah, but I think I think both of them. Yeah. So I've got you know I catch up with Lee Monday mornings, probably a Thursday morning, yeah. just to go over the first plays that we're going to run, what I think we should run, what he thinks we should run, and kind of getting that decision together. Um, I think Lee is a great coach, so I don't have. I'm not, I'm not having to go watch everything to try and create a game plan he's got it all for me and I've probably done a little bit less of the analysis since I've got a little bit older and kind of left more to the coach just so I'm a bit freer almost when I'm playing yeah. instead of overthinking too many things um, however on the pitch I think as a 10 you've got to be kind of analysing as you go and figuring out the defence what they're doing how you can break them down so on the pitch I'm probably not a coach in the pitch but I've probably got more of an input when we're actually playing than the coach Yeah. because we're the one that's in the moment we're feeling what's going on in the game we're seeing the space we're you know as a team we're kind of thinking that um, and feeling it so Do you ever find yourself commentate, like commentating when you play? Because uh, uh, some people just because you talk to yourself look there's a hole there get someone inside me that sounds really dodgy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, there's a, there's a hole on that's the inside. Alex boarding school. I need a wing. <laughs> well done. Very good. I need a wing. I need a winger on the inside. I need. I need. Look, they're they're pressing a little bit further out. Get someone around there. And you just talk your way through yeah, it. Yeah, we did one uh, the weekend against Exeter, I think. So they were they obviously blitzed really hard, and we'd noticed that in the first half. And I said to to Spenny, I said, look, instead of going through twelve, just chuck it straight to me. We'll go across the front to fifteen, and we'll score off it pretty much. We never got the ball then, but the second half we did the same thing. And we ended up scoring off it because Matty put a good kick through and we, we picked up and finished it. But um, I think it is that kind of, you commentate and you predict what's going to come. It might not come, but if everyone's talking, looking for the same picture, then it, I think that's going to help in terms of the execution and everyone being in the right place. So I think it works on both sides of the ball, defence and attack. You run through different scenarios as what they might run, what they could run with the setup, And that way, if whatever picture unfolds, you'd hope that you've covered it and everyone kind of knows what they're going to do off the back of it. You've obviously got a lot more shots to fire as a player, but are you beginning to start looking at coaching? Could you can you see yourself in a coaching box? Um, can you see yourself suit and tie and press social, conferences? Social would be outstanding. Wouldn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> um, I've thought about it. I'm not, you know, I'm 31 just now, so hopefully another 10 years. Um, but now I don't know. I've, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, yeah, I've thought about it a few times. Um, that's not like something that I'm deciding yet, but I, I think some kind of coaching... Are you, are you, would you be interested in it? I mean, yeah, staying I'd, I'd probably in the like game. to give it a go and see what it's like. Um, yeah. I spoke with Greg Laidlaw, he's coaching over in Japan. Um, he said he enjoyed it, he's, but he's maybe not sure. I think he's still enjoying it, but I think it's, it's probably very different being on the other side of it, yeah. trying to coach the boys that he probably played with. And, you know, I think getting a balance between the relationship with, with the players, if it is a club that you've played at. Do you be strict with curfews and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot as of long as, as long as they give me what they want on yeah, the Saturday, yeah, yeah. they can yeah. do what well, they that's, want. That's managing personalities, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Does it ever frustrate you with, with kind of, because obviously what you talked about here. Smile says it all. Smile says no, it all. No, 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 but like to frustrate you in terms of like how cerebral you are in terms of the game, how you've delivered, how professional you are. Obviously, you wouldn't be as successful as you had been. But how some narratives have come out about you? Does it, does it irritate you because it, it isn't true, or is it misunderstand? You, do you feel like you've still got a point to prove, or do you not give a shit? I'm not too fussed about it at okay. all, to be honest. Um, it's probably more my family that like they don't get annoyed by it, but like, why are they saying that? That's not true. Right. Or why is someone saying this? And it's just how it is. Um, I think the the job that that I'm in, it's that's part and parcel with it. People are going to say anything they want, and you know, luckily, luckily for me, I don't really bother about it because we, we interviewed Jason Robinson last night right and he and he was saying that obviously the height of his Wigan days he was out six days a week um, but he on, you know he well, consistently performed obviously at the end of the day that, that will always catch up to you but there was obviously a different mindset I just wonder where we talk about the personality some people obviously like to relax in a certain way or to do certain things but if you feel like you're under control and you're able to deliver you surely should be allowed to, to, to be like that however however that is within reason you know yeah I think me now as a person, it's very different having a, my daughter because what I do when I get home after the game is different to when 
I was at Glasgow and I was, you know, early 20s on my own, or when I was in Paris, I was living on my own as well. Um, so in Paris, I'd go back home and sit in the house on my own, play PlayStation. It was a bit boring because I'd do that every night anyway. So <laughs> it was a bit kind of boring almost. So, And in Paris, there's so many like restaurants and bars and stuff to go to. It's, it's nice to get away and just switch off from rugby. And I think me going out on the weekend, now it's not every weekend, obviously, um, but it's more a way just to switch off and get away from rugby. And it's that kind of decompression of the build up from the week. Because I think as a 10, although I said I don't do as much analysis, you still do a lot of analysis and you're mentally there all week. So on that Saturday night, I see that as kind of like, this is my night just to chill out and get away from it and do whatever I need to to come back that Monday ready to go again. Um, and like I say, now it's different having a daughter because your responsibilities change. What you can do to take your mind off rugby is different. Um, and also the fact you've got to wake up early and take the kids. Yeah, and if you've been, a, if you've been away a week bit. training, that's enough to put anyone off. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. Have you, have you always had that sort of relaxed demeanour? You know, again, if I put it into my... For the first four or five years of my professional career I was I was just angry after losing all the time and then I was angry on the pitch and I didn't want people to see me smile and everything else and then I sort of got to realize that sometimes bad performance losing is part of the game and there are interactions that you can have with crowds during games that when there's dead points and you can actually get enjoyment out of that and I actually enjoyed playing for the same reason one thing I've always been impressed with you is is because of the way you play and because of how um tight you can play to the line how close you can go you can go and the margins that you can operate in there are going to be times people intercept you or there are going to be times where you'll make a you, you'll make a mistake that costs you and your ability to actually just push that aside and go right it's, it's almost like slap bang done you smile at someone and you sort of tilt your head and then it, it doesn't change. It doesn't affect your thought process the next time or your execution. Is that something you've always had or is it... So I'm, not, I'm going to guess it's probably not something you work on, just, just judging on how this has started. But how have you, is that just be always been your demeanour? Yeah, it's probably something I've always had um, from at Glasgow. You know, I've got two brothers and my dad, we've all played sport growing up. So probably making mistakes against them and them taking the piss out, or us taking the piss out of each other is probably part of it. Um and probably why people on, online probably don't affect me because my family is first or my mates are first to like have a go at me, which are the folk that kind of only that actually mean something to you. Um, you know, so and so online that's typing something doesn't really mean anything to me. You know, as my mates are probably if they have a hard time with me, it's probably more. Yeah, I know I should have been better in that game, but in the games if I do make mistakes, you'll see me smile and kind of laugh. Um, and I don't know, going back five, six years, whatever it was. That was probably viewed as me not taking not it seriously caring, and yeah. not caring. Oh, look, he doesn't care, he's laughing. But that was probably more a coping mechanism. And that's probably my way. You know, so you'll see some boys have different things you do, like might snap their fingers or whatever it is individually. Mine was probably just smiling, sort of laughing, as if, right, that's it done now and yeah. on to the next thing. And Did you I do think, any psychology with any of it? Have you done ther any therapy stuff around that, putting tools in place or not? Uh, no, nah, not really. Oh. Not done any. Um, there's obviously mental skills people that come and work with different clubs. Um, I've not really done any one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think mentally I'm all right. right. Um, <laughs> that's what every man, that's what every man <laughs> yeah. would say. So does I'm not thinking all right. So I, I, was I thought I was fine. <laughs> yeah, but I probably I probably chat to my family more as like. Oh, fine. Um, I'll call them. I'll chat to them straight after the game, and they might think I've played really well, and I'm thinking like, nah. But if I did this differently and that differently, this could have been the outcome. Um, but also on the other side, I might think I did all right. And my, I don't know, so my dad, he could be like, yeah, but what was that kick about? Or, or you know, whatever <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so that's the grounding mechanism, yeah. Uh -huh. isn't it? And I th yeah, I think that's what's been good for me is it's, it's not like a mental skills thing or anything. No, no, it's just, okay. That's just how I've been brought up and that's just what I've done my whole career. So um, me kind of chatting to them, it, it kind of actually goes both ways. Or if I'm down, they'll kind of tell that I'm down and kind of get around me or whatever it is, you know. it's. I don't often get down as if we lose, I'm more... It's more on how I perform, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, we could win a game by 30 points or 25 points and I didn't play that well, so I'd still be like, yeah, but I could have been better. Yeah. Or if we lose a game and I play really well, I'm like, we lost, but I personally had a good game, so... Do you try and go and try, like, you know, like they say Tiger Woods used, used to play and, if he, you know, he, he did really well and he wasn't comfortable going to hit 2,000 balls. Do you have that mentality, you know, do you go home, shrug it off, or would you go, right, next day, I've got to go out and, like, do some extra kicking if my kicking wasn't good, or, or how would you balance that out? Um... I think it was different in rugby to golf because golf's a very individual. It's like me doing goal kicking. Yeah. You know, if I miss four kicks at the weekend, I'll probably try and figure it out that next week. 
like my kicking's been pretty poor this year, I think. Um, so it's something I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to find a new, I don't know, something that's just missing just now. I'm not sure what it is. Um, so I'm working with a kicking coach at Bath to try and sort that out and try and fix it. But part of it's just getting out there and just me kicking a load of balls to then find the groove again, if that makes yeah, any yeah. sense. So I was out, Johnny, would you like your stats? Must be like 50% yeah. this year. Must be like 50% this year or something. Your bath, your bath percentage is 71%. That's better than expected, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but your your test is at 80. Yeah. Have reached out right. to Johnny Wilkinson or something? Would you say? I met him actually at dinner. He seems like a nice guy. He's a lovely guy. Yeah, yeah. He's a lovely guy, yeah. But you don't want to let him in your head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Christmas Roy telling me a story he did at Toulon. He kicked with Wilkinson after he kicked balls back and he thought it'd be an hour or 45 minutes. He said he was out there for four hours the morning of the game kicking. Wow. So I've not quite got horses, that in me. Horses for courses. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but Do you know, it's funny, because we were talking before we started recording this, and we were talking about when Glasgow won what was the Pro 12, uh, it, and it feels like yesterday I did the game for Sky, and I remember you obviously starring at 10, and it, that, you, that was very early in your career, and I can remember... Do you remember the, the headphones and the dancing pre-game? And that yeah. sort of stuff, it, it really built you into this kind of this character. Was that just always... I, just yeah, I just relaxed, yeah, just go to get the, fun. Yeah, just to kind of chill out. Um, I think I still wear headphones in the warm-up. Um, you're not dancing quite as much anymore. Not right? dancing as much, no. Um, we'll see how we go this year and see if there's yeah, any yeah. dancing. Get a, get a thing but, with, um, but, but not it, recently, no. Yeah. For, for, I think it's a really refreshing thing for like young kids that watch, and actually fans, in the fact that I feel that you enjoy every time you play. Yeah. And everyone always says, what's the first thing you'd... you'd 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 tell a, a young version of yourself is is actually enjoy it more because if you enjoy it more you push yourself more, and I think I think it's really sort of refreshing and nice for people to actually focus on you you're, you're doing you're a, yes you're a professional sportsman and it means something to a club and everything but you have to enjoy it otherwise you're not going to get the best out of yourself yeah you know if I look back at myself I would have wished I'd tried more stuff. I was that guy who didn't really want to, I didn't want to make mistakes. I wanted to be that safe guy. Whereas, you know, you, you get more enjoyment by actually trying stuff and then the miracle stuff happens. I Come think, on, obviously, I think with that, there's more probably individuals coming into rugby. Um, yeah. You know, when I first started playing under 20s, it was mainly private schools up in Scotland that would be the, the feeders into the national team. And now I think there's more players from every kind of background coming into it that are more individual. And I think that's grown the game a lot because you get, like I say, kids looking up to me wearing headphones or someone else dancing or joking around on the pitch mid-game and it's getting all these different personalities into the game which is probably going to be, or I think anyway, it's going to be growing the game in a, in a different way. Did you enjoy it? And there's also the shh. Yeah, yeah, we'll come shed. on to that. Were you not, sto were you not studying stonemasonry or something? Yeah, uh, that... yeah, left school at 16 to be a stonemason for three years um, and then went into rugby. Well, I played rugby my whole time but um, I changed team to try and give it a crack for under 20s and then... Went from there. What, what, were you, what were you whittling in stone? I get a lot of abuse for whittling in wood. But what were you, in wood. I, 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 yeah, wood is my uh, medium. What were, you, were you making fireplaces and stuff? Uh, no, I've never done a fireplace. I'm just trying to find some stone around. I did do the hearth at my mum and dad's house. Did you really? Um, yes. I'd, we did a lot of work in the, the yard, just cutting the stones to then send it out to, to building sites, window sills, lintels, you mantles. you still do it now, do you think? Um, I probably could. Cause I, I, don't, I should speak to James Dyson. He loves mm. a stonemason. Does he? Yeah. There you, <laughs> there you are. There you are. There's Shame. another contract. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. But no, did, think... did, did coming through and doing that, I mean, getting out into the world, did, has that given you quite a good sense of perspective on all of this? Um, I, I would say so. I think uh, yeah, I know what kind of real life is because yeah. of that, um, which I think is good. I mean, I, and I'm not too fast if I finish up rugby and I go back to being a you know a stonemason. Or I've actually said I might go back and try and get a joinery apprenticeship or something to then maybe buy a flat, do it up myself. I kind of quite enjoy that side yeah um, there's obviously like we spoke about coaching maybe going into that I don't know if coaching for a team would be the thing for me it might be I don't know maybe some kind of mentoring one to one sort of stuff with with young tens coming through or individual attack coaches with different teams kind of consultancy stuff I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet what I want to do after but I have said to my mum a few times I might try and get a trade when I, when I finish and then go back into that amazing can I change gear ever so slightly? Because it's been absolutely fascinating. I mean, comparing this week's show with, with last week's show with Johnny May, which is about the most <laughs> extraordinary two hours I think any of us have had. Unbelievable. With you, you've sort of take us inside, in, taken us inside the attacking matrix. But you've also been very articulate about how you see the game and how a lot of the, a lot of the noise is water off a duck's back. What do you make of the Owen Farrell situation at the moment? Yeah, I saw 
he's not playing the Six Nations, is it? I don't no, know. Summer exactly. tour. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really know what's going on. I saw it was because of online. Abuse. I think it's online. Sure yeah. well, he's, I think it's just media. He's generally said just you know for he's taking a break for his mental health and for his family and yeah. family and friends' mental health. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure what's going on in the the actual um, scenario. I think being the number ten for England for what 10, 12 years, being the captain, there's probably a lot of pressure in that situation to perform every week and to get the results from the team. Um, obviously, you get that with Scotland, but I think in England it's probably a little bit higher. Um, and I think what he's done in his career is like everyone's questioning him, maybe questioning him now or saying things now, but they were all talking, giving him praise up until this moment maybe I'm, I don't know actually know what what's been going on um, do, do you have sympathy though f from your experiences and you've, you've had one or two bumpy rides I don't know whether you read it or not by the sound of it not but you seem to just sort of wander through it do you have sympathy for not, not just Owen but other players who find them, and it seems to be more of a more of a thing now than ever before that players get caught between media fans and social media and it just amplifies out of control I've definitely got sympathy because everyone takes it all in different ways and um, for me like you said I'm lucky that I don't really be, I'm not bothered by it at all no matter what someone says it doesn't really affect me so I maybe don't actually understand what it's like to be in that situation when it when it really affects you or when after every game you're coming back in you're checking the comments your your partner's checking the comments and you're really affected by it so I'm not do you, not look, do you not look at all? Or do you look and just don't care? Oh, if I look, I find it quite funny. Okay. I almost really? laugh. I'm like, really? look what this guy said. Like, <laughs> or my mates will send it to me and I'm, we're all, we kind of laugh about it. And like I said to you, it's, it's more important to me what my mates and my family say yeah. rather than guys online. It's just... And like I said, my, like I said, my mum or my dad, they might look at the comments and they're like, oh, why was this guy saying that? But why? Like, they shouldn't say that because that's not true. And I'm thinking, like, just chill out. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't bother me, so it shouldn't really bother you. If yeah. I'm being affected by it, then you can get affected maybe, but if I'm not affected by it, then don't let it stress you out. No, no, I mean, that's um, a very well, good way I remember it. my mate, he said that he was going to reply to one of them. And I'm like, if you'd reply, you're just giving them what they want. They yeah. want that reaction off the back of it. They want you to interact with them and almost allow them to think that they've got their point across. Yeah. Giving them oxygen, yeah, essentially. Yeah. And also you validate them because at the moment they follow you and they're on the outside looking in and then you, you, you erode that past so they're one step closer to you because you've got an interaction. Yeah. That's why I stopped responding after about the 18th time of burning myself, burning yeah. self, getting cancelled and losing money. Be more thin. <laughs> yeah. Be, more, Be thin. more thin. Be more thin. There is a life lesson. We've got a new section on the show um, this week. It was pulled together by James. No, it wasn't. We're letting the fans in. We've got a new section that's called the Continental Tires Question of the Week. And it's a chance for those of you who listen and watch the show to uh, ask questions that you want to know. I'm going to get back to Owen because we've got, we've got a selection here. I'm going to pull out the one from GG5356, who sounds like he's definitely <laughs> a, <laughs> Russian, <laughs> a Russian <laughs> bot. Uh, but he's asked a very intelligent question. And we're talking about Owen. You and Owen Farrell appear to be polar opposite. Do you guys get on? Uh, yeah, Honest got, answers only. Uh, yeah, now we got what did, he, what, did, what did you say when you like have to do? You do clattered him after Dwayne's try. try. <laughs> what was said? <laughs> well, uh, and the Lions were actually got on really well, me and Faz. Yeah. Um, and whenever I watch him now, it's, he, it does. He does seem like he's relaxed a little bit. He seems like he's smiling a lot. So I think maybe Faz of the past is maybe not the same in terms of being as intense. I'm not sure. I don't play with him every week, yeah. but. And like I said, on, in the Lions, we got on really well. Maybe that's because I know some of the Saracens boys from Scotland stuff and they said that he was a good guy. Everyone's got a perception of people before they actually get to know them. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you go to say big up perception. Yes. 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 What's very convincing. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Other stack up to the yeah. perceptions that go before them. Yeah. Yeah, he's still a dickhead. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But, my best friend, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, really. <laughs> we have be my friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. <laughs> But yes, I think we, we are very different probably in the way that we we manage the game or, I don't know, um, handle the game, different scenarios, manage it. Um, but we're both probably just competitors in the, in the same way. We both want to win. We've both got that drive to win. And it's just we're both different in the way that we maybe show it or the way that we act to get it. Because everyone who plays sport wants to win. You're not playing there just to take part. Although that's what everyone says. When you get to this level, it's just you want to win no matter what. Um and I think just the way that he, he is in the team and the way he is as a person, it's just different to how I am. However, that didn't affect us off the field. We still got on really well. Um, and then, yeah, in that England game, when Duan scored the try, because I just knocked the ball on because he put a good shot on me. And I thought he'd push my head into the ground and someone was mouthing off to me in the ruck. And I was kind of like, oh, what have I done here? I've just lost the ball. They've turned it over. They're going to kick it back. Duan obviously scores this try. And I thought it was Farrell at the time, so I run up to get him. 
and I was kind of like, what are you saying now, sort of thing. And then, so, sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> then he was like, it wasn't even me. And I was like, I felt quite bad after it. Because <laughs> I was like, mates with them after the lines. So I felt quite bad after saying that. And then I think it must have been when I watched it back, I realised I think it was Tom Curry and someone else in the ruck that would have been doing it to me. Not actually oh. Farrell, but I, he was the one that tackled me so I th- and was in the ruck, so I thought it was him. You, did you break make up afterwards? Did you come and go, oh, like, sorry, pal, I fucking... Yeah, I, I said to him after the game, I said, oh, I, I thought it was you, so sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. Can you just share very quickly that Doohan, Warren Gatland, <laughs> oh, the um, rebrand... Yeah, so um, on the, the 21 Lions, I wasn't there because I was still, I think, semi-final in France, so I flew in a bit later. And when I got there, then um, people were calling him Dwayne. And I was thinking, well, I don't know where this has come from. But apparently in one of the first meetings, um, Gats had, was chatting something on the screen, I think. I'm not entirely sure because I wasn't there. And he was referring to du- uh, to Dwayne. And everyone's thinking, who's this guy? Who's Dwayne? And it turned out he's meaning Duan, but he'd got his name wrong, so he's calling him Dwayne. <laughs> But now, to be fair, Duane, he's worn it well. He refers to himself as Dwayne. That's just what everyone calls him now. So I absolutely love the pinnacle of your career uh-huh. and the coach doesn't know your name. <laughs> that's, that's good, though, Dwayne McSwerve, where are you? Yeah, Dwayne McSwerve. Um, talk to me a little bit about, about Scotland and um, a, a word on, on the World Cup. Is it, is it bitterly disappointing? Did, did you fire everything you had and you can accept it? Where, where do you net that out? Um, yeah, it was very frustrating, obviously, to have gone out in the group stages again. Um, I think that's part of the reason why I wanted to come straight back to Bath, just to get over it and get straight back in onto the next challenge. Um, which, I don't know, it might catch up in me in time, the frustration, the disappointment, because I've not had a chance to, to maybe get over it, but I think coming to Bath was the right thing to do. Um, I think the team that we had, we put in a couple of good performances, but we didn't probably, I don't know, didn't show the real reflection of what we can do. Um, I think the South Africa game, when we watched back that game, although it felt like we were under a lot of pressure, that was probably the one that got away. I'm not saying that we would have won, but there's a lot of chances in that game that we maybe didn't have in the Ireland game. I've not seen that one back yet, but the South Africa game felt like we were under a lot of pressure the whole game. There was no space anywhere. Their kicking game was good. You know, they scored a couple of X Factor tries. Um, but then when we watched it back, I think Brad Moore, the attack coach, she said there's about 12 chances that we had in that game. And I was thinking, where were these chances that you saw? Because I certainly didn't see them. I didn't feel like I saw them through the game. But actually watching it back, we did have quite a lot of chances. But through their line speed and their, their pressure at the ruck, it kind of maybe put us into our shell a little bit. First game of the World Cup against the you know, defending champions. Maybe we spoke a bit too much about their line speed and the sort of dangers they have in defence. So we maybe didn't attack to our best ability. Um, so I think it was frustrating, even though we got back on, we beat Tonga and Romania. Yeah. Um, but then going into the Ireland game, it was... You know, it's a mountain. Yeah, it was tough, obviously, how, how well they were playing. And they got off to a quick start, obviously. And then we were kind of, we knew we had to win by, I think, eight points. So they went maybe 12 nil up. Mm. So from there, we've got to beat them by 24 points now with 60 minutes to go. So, um, yeah, I think it was frustrating, but, you know, you learn from it all, which is easy, easy to say now, but it's four years till the next one comes round. So it's not like a Six Nations, where it's every year that it comes round, you can try and make up for it the next year. I think, for me, the stage I'm at, maybe one more World Cup, who knows? Um, for a lot of boys, that'll be the last World Cup. Um, so I think that's the, probably the more frustrating thing that I've, that's my third one. And we kind of went out in the group stages. Although it was a tough group, we still went out in the group stages and didn't get a chance to progress even further. So hopefully I've got another one and we do better. But for now, that's all it is. Yeah. No, no, I was going to say, do you, but do you, are you, are you, it's probably the best Scotland team they've had, we've had for years in terms of both in the pack and, and out in the back. So you're still really confident that, you know, what, I don't know what Greg is going to do in terms of going forward playing that style of rugby stick to that brand stick to who you are and 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 you know just get better at those those moments in in what was it, an incredibly tough pool yeah i, I imagine we we're going to stick to the same the same style of play um i think you know south africa won it and they probably if you look at their style of play they're more sort of kicking it in forward dominant then the all blacks with 14 men in the final ran them you know so close they probably could have won it maybe um with a completely opposite style of play and I think, going back to what we were chatting about earlier, with the players that we've got with Scotland, I think the style that we're currently playing is probably the right one for us and the team that we've got. Um, you know, especially if you look at our back line, you've got you know Ali, Ben, George Horn, myself, we've got Ben Healy in there, Blair Kinghorn can play 10 Hasto, the centres that we've got. I'm not going to list everyone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all day, but I think we're with the just pl- checking in everyone's name. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think with the, the, especially though, the backs that we've got, with the danger men out wide, 
um, and the forwards doing the job up front. I think we could, we should definitely keep playing that style of rugby. And I think the kicking game and managing it, that just comes down to the nine and the ten. We'll get a feel when we should kick it, how we should kick it, what we should try and do. But as long as everyone's getting in position to run it, then they'll trust that we make the right call when to kick it and when to run. And Gregor's, um, I'll just say, he's, he's trying to get us to call it more and actually take it wider and more and quicker. Which is, at test level, you wouldn't probably think that's how to do it, maybe. But with a game with the backs, we've got the skills we've got. It's all about don't wait that extra phase or two phases. Let's just go straight away and take it on and back ourselves to to beat kind of individuals one on one. So it might be slightly higher risk if you, the opposition make a good read, but I think we've just got confidence in the in the game plan in each other, and we're just going to keep having a go, I suppose. Good. I was interested in obviously all the tens that you played against. I know that you would be solely focused on yourself, but going into that World Cup and obviously being kind of a student of the game. Who do you feel at the moment is, is is the number one ten in the world and, and kind of the way that they're playing? And, and do you feel like you're sort of learning from anything from any of these guys as well or, or are you just worried about yourself? Uh, yeah, I think you're learning all the time. Um, you know, whether it's just watching, you know, the, the clips about South Africa for that first game or Ireland with Johnny Sexton or whoever it is you're playing. Um, but also other games, look at, again, how New Zealand play, that's probably more similar to us as Scotland, how we play, so I think Moonga is one of the best um, in the game just now, so for me, watching how he plays, how um, involved in every phase he is, he's not maybe thinking about two phases ahead, he's kind of, he's very much involved in that first phase and thinking, we can maybe make a break here, let's go after it straight away. Um, and are, I you think, fly, are you fly half friends or social media friends? or like? Oh uh, Yeah, we've tried a little oh, bit, nice. I played against them 12 years ago in Christchurch, Um so yeah, that was quite funny playing against him. And I've never played against him since. Um, but I played against him then, so we had a couple of games there. Um, what so were you doing got, there? What was that? I had a, like a scope when I, my first season in Glasgow. Uh, there's a thing called a McPhail scholarship, and two players went over to every year. Two players go over to New Zealand. I think it's maybe South Africa now. They go over to New Zealand and do like a rugby season. So it's kind of I think April time till July, August. Yeah. Um, and you just play a club level, you train, it's, uh, it was called IHPU, so it's International High Performance Unit with the Crusaders. So we did that, so you train there all day, not with the Crusaders, but in your little group of people who are there with individual coaches. Um, so quite a few of the coaches that I worked with are now, or were the Crusaders coaches, probably going to be the All Blacks coaches. Um, so who you, else would you, who, who did you go I with? I went with Sam Hidalgo Klein. Did you? Yeah, the year before was Johnny Gray and someone else, I'm not sure, and before that was... Grant Gilchrist and Harry Leonard. So, oh, so it works? Yeah, there's quite a few of us that have come on and uh, gone into Scotland off the back of it. How, how did you find um, playing in New Zealand? Was it, as you'd imagine, did you find the players better? Did you find them more rugby orientated? I mean, my, my experience was, was you know, kind of that they were just lived and breathed. But, but yeah, I think it? everywhere you drive is a rugby pitch. Um, over here, it's more of, maybe not as much in Bath, but in Scotland, they know it's football pitches everywhere. Over there, it's rugby pitches on public parks. Um, and I think the the rugby IQ for everyone over there is much higher than it is here. So whether there's, you know, everyone knows how to execute the game plan and what the game plan is, whether it's a front row, whether it's a fullback, um, everyone's looking for the same space, looking for the same way to attack. Everyone's got confidence in the skills they can execute, probably because they've been brought up from such a young age, throwing a rugby ball, passing a rugby ball. Um, and I think for me, that was great as a younger ten, kind of 10 going in there, that they kind of showed me how rugby can be played in terms of everyone knowing or being so clear on, on the game plan, but also how you can, how do you say it, you can you execute no matter what position you are. And they were all looking for the same space I was looking for. So I fitted in pretty well. Um, and yeah, I think I just, when I came back to Glasgow, I was kind of saying to the boys that at a professional level, you need to be seeing all these pictures or seeing these space and seeing these opportunities. Um, and I think that's, Something that's getting better, but it's still going to have a lot of work to get to the level that the All Blacks are and probably why they're so good. Can I ask you a very question? I, I know you've spoken about this in the past, but Gregor, all, all good now? This is my, again, the smile. Yeah, we're all good. Way. All good now? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was bumpy? Yeah, there's been a couple of bumpy bumps in the road, I think. And, and when you look back at that now... Does that, does that make you stronger, though? Does that, has that made your bond stronger, having... A, oh, like the prodigal you, son type yeah. thing? Um, I think so. I think we've just gotten to know each other a bit better. Um, I think has, has it changed almost from co sort of teacher pupil to more kind of master and apprentice type thing? Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. 
I'd say it's more you're, on a level. The, he's kind of you're the best at his defense. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's more like I think for me, I've I like having an input in the attack and how the games run as, as all tens do. And I think before it, I maybe felt I wasn't kind of being listened to, and not that everything I say is right and everything he says wrong. Yeah. But I think having that balance and that relationship where we can just chat openly and honestly to each other about the game plan, what was good, what was bad, what needs worked on. Um, then the better it is. And we're at that stage now where I could just chat to him openly. He'll come and ask me questions. I'll ask him questions. And we kind of get the solution together. He'll have, you know, his game plan of how the game should be. And through the analysis I'll, I'll do, I'll have my way. And I think the more that we liaise, the more we chat, then these two game plans kind of come together. Or if I try something, he might, he might not back it during the week, but he might know what's going to come at some point because we've sort of spoken about it. Um, and I think off the pitch we're we getting on you know, we're getting on really well and I think that plays a big impact then on the pitch. You know, if you're not getting on with someone off the field and when you get on the field you might not have belief, trust, confidence in them. So then that can then play a factor. Um so now we're in a good place just now, which is which is good. We have been for the last couple of years. Um so no, hopefully uh, we just keep progressing. And that, and that's really good to hear. It's great to hear that you've worked it out. And that's as as a sort of a rugby fan, what you want is is the two of you working together. When you look back at it now, do you think I was misunderstood? I was a bit of a dick. I sort of did you, do you did, did it bother you at the time? I can't remember the exact details, but um, you walked out. Was that right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I don't know. I've I've, I've looked back at it and I. I still think it was the right thing to do because something wasn't working. Yeah. Um, and although at the time it was, it maybe didn't seem like the right thing, it didn't seem like the good thing to do. I think Gregor and I, we've both been able to move past whatever it was and we've both both probably changed and adapted to whatever happened and got over it, which is, which is probably really important for, for us too, but also for the whole team. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll have changed, she'll have changed, like I said, and I think... Even though at the time it wasn't the best, it's probably well. I think it's going to be for the best in the future, um, and yeah, hopefully we can we can win something together. Um, but if not, I think we're playing some really good rugby. We're getting some good results, and we're getting getting the fans to to get behind us. So I think although at the time it wasn't great, but I think just now it's been it's been good. All part of the story. All part yeah, of the journey. Exactly. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about. We did a show. How long are we going to be doing our top ten? Biggest stars. Must have been, it was off the back of the World Cup. Yeah. And we went through and we, we went 10 to 1 in terms of the, the biggest stars in the game right now. I think it was Khaleesi at 1 and Antoine Dupont 2 settled on a sort of uh, toss of a coin. But you were the only Northern Hemisphere star as a genuine sort of game, game changer right now type thing. Is that something you're conscious of? Do you play to entertain? Are you aware of what the what what the role is off the pitch as well do you does that sit comfortably with you that you are somebody who puts bums on seats gets people out of their chairs it, all that sort of marketing bump that goes with it um yeah i'm comfortable with it i think it's just um i'm not going to just tell me that i'm doing my job right i suppose yeah. you know we're on the pitch there to to win the game obviously um and to represent your country or your club but also to entertain people who come and watch um and I think for me as a ten, it's a very you know influential position. So if I'm there and able to to influence the team and influence the crowd and get them well the crowd off their seat cheering and, and enjoying it, then I'm doing my my job right, I suppose. So I wouldn't say it's something I think about. I think it's just the way that I've played my whole career. Um, and I think my style's maybe changed a little bit, but I still got that excitement. I like to think behind it, and um, maybe the unpredictability that people will come and watch because they never know what's going to happen almost. Um, but I wouldn't say it's something that I think of, like going into a game, I need to throw three offloads out the back door and hit two drop goals. I've never hit one of, my, one of them in my career, yeah. but um, or try something crazy. It's not something I go into a game thinking about. I think just the style of rugby that I like to play, the attacking game, is what people like to watch and they, they come to see. Hmm. Interesting. Quick interlude, because we must give thanks to our friends at NordVPN who are offering good, bad rugby listeners an exclusive deal. Did you know that you can use NordVPN to protect your online card payments? This will help you prevent your details from falling into the wrong hands while shopping online. Have you done your Christmas shopping? No. You got yeah, Have you got someone to do that for yeah. you? <laughs> um, I've got some. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the best. At Christmas. I, I kind of just buy as I go. Do you right. treat yourself? It's just cash envelopes, uh, isn't in it? In Paris, I used to... <laughs> in Paris, I used to... No, no, not, not that much. I probably get more pleasure from buying for others. 
That's right. bullshit. Um, but I like it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. What, then what would you tr- pure marketing? Yeah, that's pure marketing. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Oh, wait, cool. Keep that in. But that's bullshit. Let's go to see it. Like, what, what, what are your, th- what are your things? Like, what would you be into? Like, what, like, what game, money on? Ma- like tra- clothes. Yeah, I like clothes. I like shopping. Like this right, stuff. Okay. Um, L- labels of choice. Uh, Giorgio to be Sergini. honest, in Bath, there's not as many options as Paris. Right. In Paris, um, all the usual kind of. Designer brands. Well, well no, you, we don't tell you usually. Well, if, you know, you if you don't Chanel, name them, if you don't, don't name them, you, yeah, might, yeah, you might never we get. We can't the make your global superstar. Louis, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, we're trying to promote you here above the crowd. Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga. He's available, what, he's available for all um, photo shoots. Versace, uh, Dior, Louis Vuitton, Prado, be some of uh, my main ones. Good man. Um, uh, right, you also you need NordVPN for all this Christmas shopping that you got to get doing. Uh, you can get a discount on your plan plus four extra months on top, and there's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash goodbadrugby. And the link is also in the episode description box. What about, you 31. You, and I, I said this earlier, it, it, and I, I mean this as a compliment, it still feels, and I think it must be the, the smile and the way you play, that you're just getting going. And you've, you've been around, I mean, done a decade plus. What, is, what, what are the things that you are desperate to do with the years that you've got left in your boots? Um... I'd love to win something again. I think I've come close a few times and got to semis or the European final, but I've not managed to win anything since that title in 2015. Um, which is, you know, it's it's great going to different cl- clubs, experiencing different um, cultures and playing different leagues. But I think for myself and for most players, winning titles is almost the most important thing and the thing that you'll kind of remember. Um, don't be wrong, you'll have your friends that you played with and the all the memories, but I think when you win titles, that's that's just an extra thing that there are not many folk get to do. Um, and I think that's something that I'd love to do, even if it's just one more time, just win something else, whether it's with Scotland or Bath. Yeah. Um, do you feel you've got a setup at Bath that can achieve that? It's been a long, long time between drinks for Bath. Yeah, fans. I think I think we do. I think we're doing. You no, know, doing me on the league just now. Um, it's still you know a long way to go. We're not even halfway through yet, but I think we're we're in a good position. We're starting to get belief in all the boys. Um, and I think, again, the more that we get to know each other, the more we'll get better and better together. Um, and I'm not saying we're going to win it because you never know, but I think we've we've got a squad that we can get up there and get into the top four, hopefully. You have to do that to then get to win it. But um, I think that's the first thing, get top four, then who knows from there. But I think with the squad, we've got the belief that we're building. I'd like to think we, we can win something. I was going to say, can the journey sometimes just be as as important as what the end is? Because you could play and unbelievably have the best season in terms of... It's like of, Ireland in the World Cup. Yeah, you could, could be Ireland in the World Cup, but then, you know, just the stars don't align that one time. It doesn't make for a shit season. It doesn't make, you know, you hopefully, you know, that, that, that year has been all those Irish players, that's the best year. But is, is the journey more important or is it always having the trophy at the end of it? Um, I think... It's very philosophical. Yeah, the, it is. the journey is probably the most important thing, but then for the memory of when you're 30 <laughs> years later and you look back at it, you'll then still have that frustration, I would yeah. imagine. that, Like me looking back at that Champions Cup final against Exeter, you know, we, I, I think we sort of dominated that game, but we still lost it. And I'll still be like, like how did we lose that game? Almost like, like you say, the, we had a great year that year but, and it just didn't happen in that final. So no matter how good the year was, I will never be able to say that I've won a European <laughs> Cup. Yeah. But the journey to get there was amazing. But then looking back, you're like, oh, we didn't get anything. So, you know, you can have an average season, um, get into the top four and win the next three games or two games. And the journey there might hasn't maybe been as good as if you're the top the whole way through and enjoying yeah. that. But then you've won it and you can look back and be like, That's, that might then will be, be all that you remember. Whereas yeah. that season with... With Rash and yeah, we had great fun, but st- the main thing that sticks out would be not winning that final. Um, so maybe if you have a great journey and win it, that'd be the ideal situation. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it doesn't always work like it's that. The read between yeah. lines, winning's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 won a medal. The other thing, and I, I sort of, I asked the question, but it's becoming one of the sort of the Six Nations cliches. You think about which French team will turn up, and that one's been dispelled, etc. But Every year at the start of the Six Nations, it's, is this Scotland's year? Is it finally time for Scotland to go all the way? Do, do you feel that as a team that has, that has played so much good rugby? <laughs> I think we've felt that last five years. Yeah. But. I, yeah. 
Especially the journey's been great. great. The yeah. journey's been great, but Calcutta. 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 We've never quite got there. Yeah, the journey's actually more important. So we always talk that you win the first game and then and you win it well and you know you obviously dominate. You've won the last five against England with a couple of draws or whatever, but. It's like, oh right, they've won the first game, and it's we're off. And so, it's so just what do you the need? Media love it. What, like what do you lot. need to turn the journey into the trophy? Um, no, just a couple nice more results, nice. I think. Right, there you go. Simple, simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank Good. you. If we just won a bit more, <laughs> we'll wrap this interview up. Then. Be more fair. <laughs> it's that simple, G. We didn't know. Um, do, but do you? So here's a different question. Do you think this Scotland squad has got what it takes I think to we, find five on the bounce? Yeah, I think we do. Um, and it's just, again, whether or not we can do it, um, which we've said over the last four or five years now. Um, the tournament just gone with, what, 23 um, Six Nations. I think we beat England first up, then beat Wales. But Wales weren't probably as strong as they can be. England probably weren't as strong as... I think both could just come in yeah. there, maybe. Mm. It was sort of a transition. A but, yeah, so... I think it'll probably take us another three years because... Two years ago, we won the first game, lost the second. Then we won the first and the second. Yeah. So this year, we won the first, second, <laughs> third. And then the first, second, third. <laughs> so another three years, we'll get it. Perfect, yeah. When he's 47, he'll yeah. finally get a yeah. Six Nations medal. Yeah, so yeah. I just wondered, with, like, it's like no. psychologically with a team, you kind of see that because, you know, everyone always says the media doesn't play a role, but it seeps into camp in any way, whether it's, you know, through um, apps, if you, if you don't have physical papers, coaches read things because there's vanity. You can sometimes feel like, don't mention the ground sound, don't mention the ground sound, everyone's <laughs> fucking mention the ground sound, don't mention beating, and it always happens. Yeah, I think everyone does talk about it as that kind of belief, that hope gets the excitement up. Yeah. Um, and like, although I was joking about winning it in three years, like for us, we'd never won two games in a bounce, and, or the first two games, I don't think. So if we do that again, we've, been, if we've done that before now, right, we need to win the third game, and then will it be the same again? You have that week off building the hope, building the excitement, and then you lose, I don't know. So although I was joking about that, but you, you never know, because it's all, if yeah. we do win three games in a row, it's new for us. Um, final question is, Lions, is that an itch you're desperate to scratch? Are you are you delighted to have represented them in the way you have? Is it is that unfulfilled, unfinished business? Uh, yeah, I loved the, the last two of their 21. I was injured for a couple of weeks now, which was a bit frustrating. Um, <clears throat> but I loved being there for the whole time. I was there 2017, but only for 10 days we flew out for... We pretty much to just be sitting on the bench for two... It was, was that part of the Geography games. 6? So yeah. It, was called, yeah. it was popular as COVID. Yeah. You know what I, mean? but we, <laughs> I bet you were really welcoming to the Geography 6. <laughs> I, I, I bet you were a real pop I, 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 yeah, I thought his name was Flynn, <laughs> Flynn Ryder. I didn't realise it. <laughs> no, but I, was, I, actually was, I was quite nice, I think. I'm always pretty much the same, because when you've got personality, I mean, you can't, you can't ever be outlandish. But they did boys get to do it Sorry, the hard time. Sorry, what? And what I mean is you can't be like... Because you're an acquired taste, you have to know your limitations. Like You can't be a dick and be an arsehole like I am. You've got to be... <laughs> You don't uh, feel that Sorry, I'm, always, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure I'm what you're saying. I'm always friendly and smiley. I can't quite understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I basically, I, was, I thought it was nice. I was chatty. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. you were but right. But I think fine. when we came out, because it was the, the Tuesday before the yeah. first test, the team was, it was kind of split between the test team and then the, it was the, the non-tomatic. The bin juice, the bin juice, yeah. yeah. Was that the, no, it wasn't cheap. It was the Hurricanes, Hurricanes game, wasn't Hurricanes, it? And yeah. Marla and Marla and refused to come off. Yeah. yeah, he was the Chiefs game. He wouldn't come off. Yeah. Yeah, but he, but he gave him a hard time. He was rattled by that. You know, I don't give a shit by stuff like that. I mean, he's entitled to have his. He's been, but I didn't care. But that 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 was the point. But they were like literally in a separate. It was like like you know like a special bus for them and stuff like that, like quarantine and stuff. You know, I remember it was um, Adam Beard who, who was out there. He uh, no, it actually wasn't Adam Beard. He, he was the wrong. Um, Corey Hill, Corey Hill, it, he'd been there for two days and and hadn't trained, and, he was, and I was like, "How are you? You've flown out. Everyone's hating you, and you're you're not ready to train. What happened? You fall out the bus." Everyone laughed. He he didn't find it that funny. Right. Like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't come out. No one wants you, and you still so, so up injured. You preface this by saying what a great oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. are doing the thing. I'm a really nice guy. But yeah, <laughs> you, when, when you're on a quiet taste, I mean, you've got to be nice to everybody. For, apart yeah, from Corey yeah, Hill, who bullied off the tour. Corey Hill uh, laughing. You, Sorry, Corey. We're open to have you on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Forty <laughs> people laugh. One person didn't. That's a win. That's being nice. I mean, that's how I operate. Net positive always. Um, anyway, what was the question? If some, yeah. Yes, so yeah, but, the line, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I'd love to go on another tour. I think that one was was brilliant. It was during COVID, so you probably yeah. didn't experience it. The, the full kind of Lions tour, um, like I said, even twenty seventeen, I probably didn't experience the full thing because it was ten days. It was just for the midweek. You knew why you were flying out just to pretty much sit in the bench in case someone gets injured and then fly back home. You know, you've been told we flew out this Sunday, I think, and we, we already had our flights for the following Wednesday back home. Yeah. So it was very different to, to the, the last one where you're there the whole time, you're all building together to try and get the, the series win. So I'd love to do another one. Um, who knows, it's too, 
a year and a half ago. Yeah. Comes around quick. But, head, um, head but coach yeah. is, head co- here's a setup question. Head coach is, is announced in January. Who, who would you like, Finn, to be the Lions head coach? Whose top pocket are you putting your business card in? Um, Vern Cotter. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. That would be a curveball. Um, fantastic. What a man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, brilliant. I think, you know, we, when we talked about that that podcast about kind of the a player that creates that X factor that delivers, yeah. that does it in a way that, you know, like, I think a lot of sports people, especially fans, they have a conformist view of like what someone should be like. And I think he's such a great advert for uh, A, how players want to play, an inspiration to kids to laugh off mistakes, to get on with it, to play, to show that it doesn't impact you, to do things in you know, your way. And I think for me, that's, that's really important. And obviously the impact he has, looking at the stats, you know, I, I rarely look at, look at the stats and it was astounding to see in comparison to all the other number uh, tens in the world, number one, number one, number one. And to be a humble guy, you know, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's great really. And I'm very excited to see where he, where he goes. I mean, not sure I want to see Scotland win a World Cup or anything, but I quite like. To, I'd happily see them win a Six Nations because I think it's been, it's been too long. And, and I'm, I'm much more interested now as a, as a retired player in the journey and the the story and the rugby, I don't. I'm not tribalist. I don't care. If, I wanted to see Scotland beat South Africa. I wanted to see Ireland go and win the World Cup. I want to see France, you know, do well. I I don't care about you know England 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 play Scotland. I want to see if he does a 50 meter pass or a reverse kick or out the back door or someone they carve up. I'm much more interested in that story than I am, and I think he's a refreshing thing in the game. So I'm excited to see how it goes. Are you enjoying it all as much at the moment as you ever have done, or are there periods where? It was it's only a boatload of fucking cash. Yeah, you better yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Your bank manager's happy, yeah. certainly. He's got you? someone to carry his wallet. The bloke, honestly, is way <laughs> he's late. Made, he's made accounts in Monaco, yeah, so yeah, you know, yeah. he's definitely all right. Yeah. <laughs> Are you um, enjoying it? Yeah, I'm still enjoying it. I think I really want to stay in, in Paris, but I think coming here was the right thing to do because it's kind of really freshened it all up to me. Yeah. Um, you know, had I stayed in France, it would have been good. You know, Stuart Lancaster, a new coach coming in, but it would have potentially just been the same again for the next two or three years. And then by that point, I'd have been 30, what, three. And then to do what would I do after that? Maybe yeah. somewhere else in France, but I'd have probably just stayed there. So I think, again, coming here to Bath and the, the team that, he's, that Johan's building, the way we're playing, I think it's been really refreshing. Um, and something new, it's, you know, at times it's, it can be challenging being away from home, but it's more, it's easier here than it was in Paris. But I think it's been really good and yeah I'm, I'm loving it to be honest and I think having my daughter as well that's probably changed me a bit as well it's it's not given me that sense of purpose I think before it was kind of just playing for fun and for the love of the game and um, I think that's why I'd probably love to win something so that she's got a memory of that as well mm. even if she might not remember it but we'll yeah. have photos so um, I think that's something that would be, be lovely I'm I'm delighted you're enjoying it. We're absolutely loving watching what you're doing. Do you want to do the honours with the um, the black eye behind you because everyone that comes on gets a little bottle of tins gin? It's not like I call it for you because you know how about cr- Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the watered down version. Yeah, exactly. Don't tell I'm going to give it to him now and he can't play the game tomorrow because he's got smashed yeah, up yeah, drunk exactly. on the way home. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, we've created this uh, to give back to the game as well. So we've got a fund that uh, money from this these, these gin goes back into... Um, back into players fund but we always give one to every guest that comes on so Thank there you, you go much. happy Christmas there you, go. you can pass that on to someone that's one of your presents Take yeah. off yeah, exactly. you, re- you can always re-gift uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, if you like, do you like gin and tonic? Uh, yeah I do I don't drink it too much I don't actually drink on Saturday after the game so I don't right. actually drink at all. But, Do you not? It's all right. We'll uh, so save it for tomorrow night, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have to yeah, get another one next week. Very true. We'll send it. You take the boy out of Scotland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that is it. That's our Black Eye of the Week. Available on Amazon, in Sainsbury's, and Master of Mortals. We're trying to raise a million pounds a year for rugby players. As we have £1.50 of every bottle goes into the Black Eye Rugby Fund, as has said. Um, thank you very much indeed for coming on. It's been really, really good fun. We've entered the Not Matrix. Yeah. And I think the life lesson that falls out of this, as we said earlier, is hashtag be more thin. Uh, we could all live by that a little bit more. We have been the good, the bad, and the rugby with our friends at Continental Tires. We're a folding pocket production. Stats and facts, and there have been a lot of them this week, have been provided by Oval Insights, and this episode was produced by Tom Edwards. See you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>